Hi, this is Mark. Today I'm going to show you the difference between groups, segments, and tags in MailChimp. Okay, the first example here is an audience that I've set up as a test where it has no groups or segments. So unless your subscribers have descriptive last names like this one, at least photography, you would have a difficult time trying to figure out what they're interested in and what kind of services they would like from you. So if you could imagine if you had a bigger list, about 500 to 1,000 subscribers or more, that every campaign you would email, they would get, all your subscribers would get that campaign. Okay, so all 5,000, 10,000 people would get your one campaign, whether they like it or not. Now the sign up form for this one that has no groups, no segments would look like this. This is all the information you'll get. All right, let's switch to an audience I've set up here as a test audience that has groups and segments. And the first group that you'll see is an interest group. I have another one called type, but we'll just focus on one for this tutorial. Okay, so you could think of this interests column as a category and under this column will have groups that fit into the category. So I have a photography group, for an example, yoga, art, and fitness, etc. To look at the form here, it would look like this. The subscriber form would have the interests category and underneath each group. So this gives you more information about the people subscribing to your audience. Okay, just to summarize, so my interest column puts people into groups that gives me a better idea of what they're looking for and possibly what I could send information about to them. But right now, I don't have any segments, so if I do create a campaign, it will still go out to all the people on this list. So this is where segments comes, comes in. All right, so let's look at the segments that I have set up for this audience. I'm going to click on View Segment here. The drop down will show me that I have three segments set up. Now, this should make it a little bit more clear that now I could create a campaign and say or specify that I just want it to go to people who are interested in writing, the writing group, or even segment based on gender because I do capture that in the form. And then we have a photography group. Now to illustrate this a little bit more, let's go ahead and create a brand new segment. I'm going to click on the new segment button. I'm going to say contacts match all and select my interest groups. And from this interest group, we don't have yoga yet. So let's go ahead and select all the people who are interested in yoga when they subscribe to my audience, they clicked this checkbox, yoga, okay? Let's go ahead and preview that. And this shows me I have three contacts. I'm going to save that. And I'll call this one yoga interests. Now, when I go and create a brand new campaign, campaign like this one, hot new yoga classes, instead of sending this campaign to the entire list, I could choose my audience here, which will be the test segment audience. And here I'll find that my yoga interest segment is there. So we'll see that I'm getting the segment example audience. And just a few moments ago, I created the yoga interest segment. Click Save. And if you remember, we could do a quick preview that we had three people in that segment. And we could verify that in this yoga interest segment that this campaign will be going to those three people. It's a nice feature in MailChimp. 
All right, so let's summarize what we just did. So we created a interest column or group that gives me information about what people are interested in. But if I want to send a campaign based on people's interests, I would have to create a segment. Otherwise, every campaign I send out would go out to the entire list. So this lets me narrow down the list or create, maybe you could think of it as sublists. Now, one common question I get a lot is, well, why don't I just create a separate yoga list, separate photography list? The straightforward answer is that it would be much more to manage and you might have duplicate, even triplicate uh, data. So maybe one person like, let's say this one, Mary All Around Her, would be in several of your lists. So Mary All Around Her is a very good example. You would be charged for every time she is in one list, even though it's just one email. So even MailChimp allows you to do that. They'll still recommend that you should have one master list and use segments and tags to help you organize what campaigns go to who. All right, next up is tags. Let's cover that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my test list here and I'm gonna to scroll to the right until I see the tags column. And I'll see that there's one person that has a tag called Bali Workshop 2020. Let's talk about this scenario. So the one way I think of this is interests are specified by the person signing up. So they could click one to many or not, maybe not anything here, but that's coming from your subscriber. Where tags, I feel, are more internal. And if you look at the MailChimp documentation, they'll say basically the same thing, where I decide what they're interested in and I could automate this. So this was actually an automated step where when somebody uh, used one of my landing pages for a Bali photography workshop, automatically MailChimp, I told to tag it with Bali workshop. So I know later where those people came from and I could send an autoresponder or a thank you or follow-ups for more workshops. So now let's create a new segment for Bali Workshop 2020. I'm going to click on New Segment. Contacts match all the following. And instead of email marketing status, I'm going to scroll down, look at tags. And this will be my list of tags here. I only have three. Bali Workshop 2020 is what I want. Let's preview that. Should be one person. There he is. Save that. name this it could be different or I know this one's very similar to the tag itself but just for time okay just to save some time I just left that name kind of generic okay let's create a brand new campaign I've already titled it Bali photography workshops in 2020 Right now, this campaign will go out to the entire list. Let's go ahead and edit this because I just wanted to go to that one segment. Okay, the audience is correct. It's a segment example. Let's look at the tags here. There we go. Or, or actually the segment that I already created. You can do a tag on the fly here, but I already did this beforehand just to be a little bit more organized. But if you want to do it, um, say a spur of a moment campaign and you didn't create that segment yet you could do this on the fly you could just say send this campaign to this tag all right i know that adds a little bit more to the confusion but it does give you some flexibility okay and we're done uh this, that's a wrap for this video i'll also put a link in the youtube description to an article that i wrote about why you should mainly work with one email list i know there's exceptions to the rule but especially when you're working with MailChimp, try to keep everything in one master list and then use groups, segments, and, and tags to help you refine and organize. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.